And the third angel poured out his vial on the river and the fountains of water. After Laura's death, Father's world collapsed. We haven't had much illness in the house either. Not until Father. It's something you don't reckon with until it's there. And then you realize it was there all the time. It was always there. The possibility of this incurable illness, this creeping death. There's nothing left. Do you understand what I mean? You seem to be reaching at the void, then, then you realize that you're a void yourself. You can't go on holding up the roof forever. You know that, that sooner or later, you've got to let go so you don't know what to do. You must, if I can help you. I don't want your help. Because there's nothing to be done. I just want to talk to somebody. Sympathetically. Ah, mother. How nice of you to come down. How are you? You, um, you know Miss Brangwyn, of course, don't you? Yes. Winifred tells me the doctor had something to say about your father. What is it? Oh, just that his pulse is very weak and it misses altogether on occasions and he, he might not last the night out. You're not getting into a state, are you? You're not letting it make you hysterical. No, I don't think so, Mother. It's just that somebody's got to see it through. Oh, have they, have they? And why should you take it on yourself? What have you got to do seeing it through? It'll see itself through. You're not needed. No, I don't suppose there is much I can do. It's just how it affects us, you see. <laughs> You like to be affected, don't you? It's quite a treat for you. Yes. Yes, you would have to be important. You've no need to stop at home. Why don't you go away? You're as weak as a cat, really. Always well. A strange lady. My mother. Yes. With ideas of her own. <laughs> 